Let's begin with the escalating bushfire emergency in Western Australia. Residents in parts of the state's south have been evacuated from their homes as two out-of-control blazes continue to threaten the region. We've got reporters at both fire grounds, but let's first start with uh, Daniel Mercer. He's in Albany and Anthony Panacea in Bridgetown. Uh, but to Daniel in Albany first, what is the latest of the fire situation where you are? Well, Kath, the fire conditions had been easing overnight but the wind has sprung up this morning again and it's shifted in direction so it's now coming from the west ahead of a front later on this afternoon that's going to pose a challenge for firefighters because it's going to open up a new front in that blaze to the west of Denmark and push the fire towards the town. Mm. I noticed there uh, that you are uh, you know there's residential homes behind you it's quite built up just how many homes and, and people are under threat? Well I uh, Kath, I'm in Albany, which is about 50 kilometres to the east of Denmark. Uh, the town of Denmark itself has a population of a few thousand, and the town itself is relatively built up. Where the fire is burning at the moment is in semi-rural, uh, sort of small lifestyle holding, property holding kind of areas. But as it moves closer to the town, obviously the density will pick up. Mm. And we, uh, we were chatting to the Bureau of Meteorology yesterday saying today was really the day that they were most concerned about. Are the forecasts for those high winds and high temperatures playing out at the moment? Well, the temperatures have dropped significantly compared with yesterday when the mercury went well above 40 in the Great Southern. Uh, the challenge though today is that the winds are swinging so they're going to push the fire in a different direction and the winds are going to be picking up in terms of their speeds. And really the, the big question is to what extent that happens and whether there's any rain that accompanies the front because firefighters are really hoping that rain can temper the blaze. What can you tell us about any of the uh, evacuation centres that have been set up for people in those areas and the advice to them, is it, is it too late to now leave? What, what's the latest on the, that advice? Well, certainly it's not too late to leave for Denmark residents if they want to go to Albany, where there's been an evacuation centre set up at the Leisure and Aquatic Centre. Heading west towards Warpole, though, I mean, I, the South Coast Highway is closed heading in that direction from Denmark, so unless you're on the western side of the fire front, uh, it's probably too late to leave. OK, Daniel, thank you for that update. Let's head to Anthony Pansia now, who's in Bridgetown. Uh, Anthony, can you take us through the latest there? Uh, good morning, Kath. Yeah, Bridgetown itself is about 300 kilometres, I guess, north of Walpole. So residents and emergency services here definitely watching that same weather pattern play out down here. The emergency warning is still in place for the area around Bridgetown, and this fire has already burnt through about 2,300 hectares of mainly bushland. Uh, as yet, no confirmation that any properties have been impacted, but that will certainly play out throughout the day. Um, I understand firefighters, though, are actively defending properties around Bridgetown. And the forecast for that area today, Anthony, what's that? Uh, very similar to the south coast there where Daniel is. Um, and like Daniel said there, we've woken to slightly milder conditions. Yesterday, uh, the temperature did get up over 40 and it was very windy this morning. It's quite calm and not quite as hot, but that is that temperature is just sort of soaring up throughout the day. We'll check back in uh, with both of you throughout uh, the day. Anthony Pansy joining us from Bridgetown and Daniel Mercer in Albany. Many thanks to you both.